everybody, welcome to the Fire It Up with CJ show. Today we have Susanna Stoica talking about her book, um, Healing with a Loving Heart, Discovering the Power of Energy Healing um, Materials. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about, let's just even breaking down um, the idea of loving heart and how that actually is connected to healing and energy. Uh, it's, there is, it's a double connection. One, the title of the book came because I was doing healing with uh, a nephew of mine. And his brother was very interested in uh, what I was doing. And he wanted to watch while I was doing the healing. And when I was done, uh, we were in a separate room and we went out of the room and his mom asked, so what did Susanna do? And he said, oh, she gave him love. He gave him health? Love. Love. Oh. Yeah. So, uh, which is absolutely true. Um, the energy that we work with as healers is pure unconditional love. And uh, that's the highest frequency energy that you can have. And the healer cannot be fully effective if uh, he or she is judgmental or uh, if, he, if he or she cannot be completely focused on the person in an open-hearted way. Hmm. So that's why it's a, the title of the book. Hmm. And how is it involved with energy? The energy field, uh, we, everybody has an energy field, including pets and plants and even stones mm. have energy fields. It's a different uh, type of vibration, of course. Uh, the stones have a, a much slower one. Plants have a different, lighter ones. Uh, the persons, people have a more complex one. But every, every living thing has an energy field. Hmm. And by the way, plastics don't have an energy field. Okay. All right. But Which most is living, very interesting. Yeah. So, but like metals would have a energy yeah. field. So anything, when, and what's interesting about plastics, that's made out of minerals that have been reconstituted, but they don't have an energy field. No, I couldn't feel it. Anyway. I, I tested it years ago when my son was started getting interested in uh, energy fields and I couldn't find it. So maybe it's very slow vibration that I can, couldn't find at the time. Mm. But this energy field is inside our body as well as outside. And there are several layers. The more dense one is called the physical field. Now, when we are happy and we are healthy, this energy field is uh, wide. If we are worried or we are angry or fearful, this energy field contracts. And when it contracts, uh, it's like the programming of our whole system doesn't work right anymore. Mm -hmm. That's when we get sick. Mm. Because of, uh, we are born as uh, living beings with a programming for self-healing. Otherwise, if you cut yourself, you wouldn't get repaired, right? Mm -hmm. If a bone breaks, it wouldn't uh, heal. But when we are uh, worried or have these negative emotions, the field uh, contracts the replication of the cells doesn't happen properly. Mm -hmm. And that is described very nicely in Bruce Lipton's uh, book, uh, Biology of Belief. Mm -hmm. Actually found that uh, the proteins in our uh, system curve, in our cell curve when uh, we have negative emotions. So imagine uh, um, our DNA. It's a ladder, right? It's made of proteins. 
Now, if that letter becomes uh, curves, it becomes tighter, right? When it, uh, and if it becomes tighter, when it has to split in RNA, uh, uh, the piece that goes on to the next uh, cell, the newly minted cell, and the one the half of which dies off, the separation doesn't happen properly. Mm. And that's how we get sick. Mm. But the, the role of the healer is actually not to heal, but to balance the energy field, relax the energy field, so this innate uh, healing uh, process can happen properly again in our body. Mm. Okay, so um, so when you worked with, um, when one of the genesis for writing the books, it seems like, is when you're working with your with this your son's friend, you're actually sending unconditional love. So um, um, you were actually looking at their energy field, and then you said it, it, you, there is an energy inside and outside of the body. So when you're referring about looking at the energy field and usually it being a white energy field, I assume is that outside or inside that you're looking at? I can see both. I can uh, I can even see organs and bones and so on. I can see inside. I can um, and I can see the field of the different organs and mm, like okay. uh, what's happening um, as a healer if if somebody is really healthy and has a positive outlook, the field is beautiful. It, it's uh, vibrant, it's sparkly, and it has in the physical part of it very vibrant colors, very mm. beautiful colors. Mm. When we are upset, uh, the colors become muddy, darker. Mm. It's That's very interesting. Actually, at one point, I, I had uh, somebody do, uh, click some pictures with that, those devices that you can see on some... Uh, Corellian oh, energy, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, yeah. And you can see uh, what I found very interestingly. Uh, I was working with a couple, and he had really emotion, big emotional problems. The wife thought she was fine, but when I we clicked the picture for both of them, I could see the patterns from the husband's energy field reflected in the wife's energy field. Right, because they're connected. Interesting. Yes, right. very interesting. <laughs> and also we found that uh, when I would work on one and we click the pictures afterwards, both of them would be influenced again. Interesting. So when you actually saw each individual and then when they were putting together, you could actually see their energy feeling change when they actually connect it together. Yeah. Fascinating. Okay. So, um, and tell us about the discovering of the powerful of the energy meaning. So part of what your d discovery, how did you discover that it was about the energy fields and the inside and out? And how did you learn how to work with that through sending unconditional love? Uh, it is a very interesting story that um, my husband had really bad back problems. Mm -hmm. And as a very proud male, he wouldn't go to the doctor. Mm -hmm. And uh, I decided I had to do something because he, he was suffering so badly. Mm -hmm. He had to use me as a crutch to get to get to the washroom. Oh, wow. So it was really bad several times a year. And uh, finally, I said that I have to do something. I didn't know I could do myself something. So I first uh, learned how to do reflexology, which is pushing the different points on the body to to release uh, certain conditions. Uh, the problem was that when I tried this is done either typically on feet, if not on feet, on hands. And uh, when I tried to work with it, my husband couldn't take it because he was too ticklish. 
So I went <laughs> back to the drawing board. You should have seen me with all these uh, charts <laughs> on the wall and uh, pictures and all that. Anyway, back to the drawing board. So I found a book about polarity healing, mm. which is a, a healing method, an energetic healing method derived from Chinese medicine. And uh, I went to the, well, at the end of the book was saying, don't try it without being properly trained because you can get unexpected uh, reactions, which I later found out that uh, some, some people when they worked <laughs> with patients uh, and they release too fast the negative emotions, they, they can get, could get even beaten up. So uh, the warning was right. I didn't know at that time. Anyway, I went to the course and at the course, as we were practicing on each other, my hands took off mm. um, and started moving by themselves. I couldn't stop them. I couldn't move them away. And I looked at the teacher and he showed me from the front of the room, just stay with it. And when finally my hands uh, stopped, the lady said that she had a very bad uh, lung inflammation because of the flu. No one could find what was really happening, but she knew that she couldn't breathe. Mm. Uh, they tried also so antibiotic and nothing worked on her, but now she was uh, breathing properly. So that really scared me. <laughs> you were excited and you're scared. <laughs> combination between my hands being out of control and being an engineer <laughs> who thinks very linearly. So if I touch somebody and I made her well in uh, 20 minutes, if I, of course, you think that if you touch the wrong way, you make somebody sick, right? Very engineering type thinking. So I tried to find out what was, what happened that time. And the, the teacher told me, you have to find out for yourself. You mm -hmm. wouldn't tell me. So I went and I looked at the, at the yoga place, a meditation place, and the, they owed and odd about the whole experience. And at the end, they told me, you have to find out for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> So it took me a while, but in the meantime, I, I uh, went home and my, I tried to tell my husband, maybe he has some idea. And he said, you know what, you do it, take whatever courses you want, <laughs> but don't tell me about this stuff. <laughs> so here I was. And then I took the next person, which was my dad. And I said, you know what happened? And I told him the story. And he said, oh, it was healing. You were doing it when you were seven years old. Oh, what? Wow. And he said, oh, don't you remember when I asked you to bandage your mom because she, had, she walked into a window and she had a bad uh, uh, cut on her forehead? And I remembered that uh, I, because my dad would faint at the sight of blood, she couldn't, he couldn't control it. He gave the seven year old all the gauze and the cotton and uh, <laughs> the sofa to take care of it. And I remembered uh, having to move my finger on uh, the cut till the bleeding stopped. It was like I was driven to do it. Mm. And uh, then I bandaged my mom. Of course, I, my dad was telling me from the kitchen what to do. I bandaged her. In the meantime, they called uh, out the ambulance because uh, she was bleeding so badly. And by, by the time they got to the doctor and the doctor opened the bandage, said, there is nothing I can do. If you would have come immediately, I would have put some clamps because that's what they would put metal clamps at that time. But now, well, there is nothing for me to do, just as the person who did this, to change the bandage. And he said, by the way, when did it happen? Uh, why did you wait? 
And my father said, no, it was about an hour ago. And he says, well, who did this? And my father very proudly said, my seven-year-old. <laughs> so he came that day home. And she was smiling like a, like a Cheshire cat. And I didn't know why. And uh, he, uh, he patted me, you know, the seven-year-old. But he didn't say any, my, anything after. But the, the drive to, to put my finger on the one still stayed with me. And it was very interesting that every time somebody was in trouble, you know, cut their fingers, my friends or something, I was the first to go and help them out. Mm -hmm. And uh, then my, when I had my son, uh, I also was able to figure out what was going on um, in my country of origin at that time. Many years ago, we didn't have uh, uh, vaccinations. Kids would go through the normal childhood illnesses without any problems. It was a normal process of growing up. So my son would have all these uh, childhood illnesses, smallpox and so on. And uh, I, I would go, of course, always started in the evening and I will wait till morning and go to the pediatrician and the pediatrician would say, so what do you think is here now? And what did you do about it? And she always would say, good, good choice, go and continue the same thing. So it was already a joke that I, she didn't know why I was coming to her because I was already on the way to doing what I needed to do. Wow. And then it happened, you know, and once uh, uh, I didn't dare touch anyone for about two years. And then- Wait, so would your, your son came when you were in, I, I'm not even sure where you're originally from when you were curing your. I am originally from Romania, from okay. a very famous part of it, which is called Transylvania. Oh, Transylvania. Okay, got it. Yeah. So from, from Romania, you're like, Transylvania, let me heal you. Okay, so you're. <laughs> you're so um, is this before or after your husband's back injury? Uh, that's, uh, that was uh, after. The, okay, the, got it. The, the stuff with my mom was when I was seven years old. Yeah, yeah, but then after, so you healed, you, so you didn't continue. So what happened with your husband after you took the yoga and the polarity help, you know, healing modality? Uh, finally, I took the polarity course for him. Yeah. And after this happened, uh, he wouldn't let me work on him for a while. And I was afraid of working on him. And then my son uh, got sick and he was um, diagnosed with Cushing disease, which is a tumor on the adrenals. Oh, wow. Yeah, so his um, concentration of uh, adrenal hormone was 100 times more than normal. And the doctor, my son was really pale and headaches and a color. And um, I decided at the time I have to touch him. If I was able to help that lady, uh, I, I owe it to my son to try it. Yeah. And I worked on him. Um, his kidneys felt hot like... Um, if I would touch a, a hot iron. Wow. And um, I was surprised after I was done that I didn't have uh, blisters. It was so hot. But after the third session, everything calmed down. I got, I got the message in my mind that I had to work the rest of the week. And in the meantime, the doctor, after doing the original tests, uh, told us to go for uh, x-ray with dye to, to see the size of the tumor. Now, when they looked for the tumor, they couldn't find it. Wow. So we went back to the, uh, the family doctor and um, 
He said, I, uh, he said, I don't understand. Uh, let, uh, we have to do a biopsy to find it. And I said, uh, can I have a, a request? Please do the test, uh, the same test you did originally on my son before you do a biopsy. And he was nice enough and we repeated the test and when it came up absolutely normal, he said, I don't understand. I did the original test at two different places to make sure. And the second time I did it at two different places. So he had a problem and it just disappeared. I don't understand. You're like, <laughs> this is what happened. <laughs> And finally, I, I told him, look, uh, I have to tell, uh, fess up to it. I, I did healing. So that's how uh, he found out what I was doing. And that's how it started my uh, uh, doctors recommending people to see me when they were at the end of the medical uh, signs. Yeah. So it's like, I'm so when, and I actually have a doctor like this in Seattle that I'm seeing because I have all sorts of medical issues that you're probably like, oh yes, I see them all. But you know, if, if, but it's, it's, I, I guess the question is when do people usually, I'm seeing this doctor because I've seen a regular doctor, I've seen a chiropractor, I've seen an acupuncturist and like, I feel like I could be doing this for a really long time. Um, and that it's stuff that this other guy who sees energy does healing. He can actually see it and feel it and see things that other people can't, which it sounds like you have that same capability. Um, and what is interesting about a heal, uh, good healer can see things that uh, no uh, measuring equipment can pick up. Mm -hmm. No medical measuring equipment because it, it's a, it's a limitation. Uh, equipments are built for what we know already about the human body. Mm. Mm. That's why they are limited. Right. So your view, so, medical, like the standard thing is that they're only, their illnesses are designed for like what we know and what we the, can the, the equipment. The equipment... Yeah. You can't uh, you can't build an equipment for something that you don't know about the body, right? And, you and, have to first know about it. Yeah. And what are your other views on illnesses that you know typical doctors like? What the limitations are on those? Uh, first of all, I have to tell you that uh, medicines have their place in uh, healing. Uh, I have uh, the capability also to test what uh, supplement somebody needs and what medication uh, is good for the person. For example, if somebody has a certain illness, a diagnosis made by a doctor, and there are three options of medication, I can tell them which of the medications would be best for that particular person, how much to take and when. To take it with food, without food, in the morning, in the evening, and so on. And I find somebody sometimes that the person ne really needs a medication, and that is usually when the imbalance is uh, big and it needs a fast intervention. The alternative things always take a much longer time mm. to kick in because they work at the source of the problem, as opposed to the medicine works on the symptoms. Mm. So each one has its place. And sometimes you, you need to make, uh, use a combination between a medication and alternatives mm. uh, in order to get well. Mm. Now, the problem is that some people who are into alternatives go to a mainstream doctor who doesn't have any idea about the naturopathy, and they get, and they go also, if they are really inclined to also a homeopathic doctor, 
and they get three sets of medications, one from the mainstream doctor, one from the naturopath, and one from the homeopath. Mm -hmm. And I have found uh, many times people really getting very sick. Mm. And when I tested them, if they would have taken only one of those three, they would have get, uh, they would be well. Mm. But what happened, the three of them overtaxed the system. Mm. So called generated more stress in, on the energetic system than, than uh, the person could handle. Mm. And sometimes they get sicker mm. and they say nothing works. So the solution is that if you, if you use alternatives, you need somebody to know everything you do, including adjustments. Mm -hmm. and acupuncture and whatever you do or massage somebody from all the practitioners has to know so you don't end up to uh, to have uh, competing solutions for your illness mm -hmm. yeah I, I found with my current situation of which i have a, a bunch of medical maladies that even just having one person triage, like this is your body likes this, your body doesn't like this. It's actually helpful because otherwise you're giving your body so many inputs. It doesn't know what to do with all the information. It's like, you know, choking it down with lots of different things. Yeah. Also, uh, another thing, which is very important, don't work with multiple energetic practitioners, hmm. like uh, an acupuncturist, uh, shiatsu practitioner who, who pushes the points, uh, the acupuncture points, and then somebody who, who work with the energy field mm. or multiple people who work with the energy field mm. because every alternative practitioner will try a certain path to healing depending mm. on their experience. And it's like jerking the field in different directions. So you end up not having anything positive happen. Mm. Interesting. Hmm. Okay, interesting. And um, I want to ask... For example, you uh, I also found something very interesting. If you do massage, for example, the best is to let about 48 hours before you do a uh, lighter for, uh, treatment. So if you do... Uh, acupuncture leave 48 hours after a massage so the body settles and you have a stable system you will have a better outcome of the acupuncture right okay well um i wasn't expecting this but if you actually tune into my system what do you see can you tell i can't <laughs> okay, so you actually have to see the person face to face. No, I usually use a uh, uh, head to toe picture of the person, front and back. Ah. And I have to calm down and look into the field. Okay, so once you do that, you'll, you're able to actually assess what's happening. And then, yeah. and then kind of see like what's happening during in that person's field. So really how you're working is at an energetic level. And, and we yeah. started off the, this conversation by saying that um, when you were working with your son's friend, he said, what did you do? You said you gave him love. So is it when you're working with them and you're doing, I don't know if you still use this mona modality of polarity healing or yoga and all the different things that you said you got trained on. Is it that you're just thinking about unconditional love while you're placing your hands on them? Or how does that, how does the love piece fit into it? Uh, usually well, if I, uh, before I work with somebody, I take some time to, to focus myself, to, kind of throw away the daily uh, din and uh, completely focus on the person. Not, nothing but the person exists by the time I am done with this meditation. And then when I 
uh, start working with a person, I just let my hands go wherever they want to go. Mm. And uh, I can uh, perceive stuck emotions mm. and uh, under functioning. I can see the general field. Every person's field, by the way, is like a fingerprint. Mm. Uh, the, the strengths of the field and uh, the type of frequencies that are in the field are very uh, particular to that person. Mm. And the whole field has a certain feel to it, a certain uh, general vibration and certain frequency and amplitude. Uh, talking from electrical point of view. Uh, so the field is not necessarily electrical. And uh, I perceive the whole field and then I perceive the differences. So for example, if you have a, a sinus infection, so you would have pus in your sinuses. The place where the pus is feels a, a sicker energetically. If you have a broken bone, actually the field is broken. It's like cut mm. with, a, with a knife. Okay, got it. If you have a broken heart, if somebody uh, very close to you passes away, you can feel it's the, the weave of the field above the heart is uh, broken. Mm. You have to repair it, darn it like a sock, you know, mm. from an energetic point of view. And then people are not so, uh, they still mourn the person, but it's not to extremes. Mm. Interesting. So when you're feeling, and I know when I've done acupuncturist, you know, the person is running their hand over, you know, the field outside of my physical body. So when you're doing that, you can actually feel where there's punctures, problems, or areas that need to be resolved. And in addition to that, you can also empathically feel on the inside as well, or how does, is that? Yeah, sometimes I, I uh, literally walk inside the field, inside the person. And I can see, for example, if uh, I worked with people with ALS and the uh, traditional ALS is basically broken neural uh, connections. Mm. And I can, I can walk inside and see them and tie them back. <laughs> okay, so I'm just, I, I'm, I'm dying of curiosity. Were, were you an electrical engineer or a mechanical engineer? Or none of them, chemical? Uh, I am a, a particular type of electronic engineer. Uh, namely, I was uh, a computer design engineer, not software, but the hardware of the computer. Oh, is that fascinating? So do you feel that that plays into your knowledge? Because your bodies are like computers and you're just like using the frameworks of what you know from computer electrical engineer to think about the human body? It's very interesting. I was always interested in the brain. And the circuits which are used in computers are inspired by the neural circuits. Oh. Uh, my, my PhD thesis was actually building computers with uh, neural cell-like circuits. Oh. And uh, also, very interestingly, when I started doing healing, I, find, I found uh, to my surprise that it was easiest for me to work with the brain. And I saw that every healer works very easily with the brain, but when I had my own uh, brain injuries, two uh, on the same day, uh, I couldn't find anyone to do what I was doing. So did so, you have to do them on yourself? Uh, when you are uh, at the state where you can't remember any of the languages you used to speak, wow. uh, you can't do healing. It, 
it, uh, I had to recover, I used my knowledge of working on others to limit the effects of the brain injury because I knew how, what I needed to do immediately. Mm. And that was releasing as much of the trauma as possible. Mm. And then as I was um, re very, very slowly regaining capabilities, uh, I pulled in my knowledge slowly and I tried, started using to heal myself. Well, wow, fascinating. Okay. All right. I wanted to, as we wrap the session up, I wanted to talk about COVID and what you've noticed, because I'm sure people have come to you with COVID and um, you'd made an interesting comment before the show that oftentimes our fear of COVID is actually getting in the way. And tell me a little bit about what that means and what people can do to protect themselves. So, uh, as I was saying before, uh, everybody has an energy field. And uh, when we are healthy, the energy field is wide and it's vibrant, it's high frequency. Uh, but when we, when we have negative emotions, we are worried, we are depressed, the energy field kind of collapses on itself. Mm -hmm. And we, we are uh, much more prone to getting sick because my, our field does not work at its best. So the first thing people have to do is stop listening all the time to the bad news mm -hmm. and focus on what is positive in their lives. And I can tell you that I found a lot of beautiful things happening in all these terrible COVID uh, uh, period, people who I didn't even expect offered help, offered to shop, to uh, do any, all sorts of stuff for me. Hmm. So, uh, and I did for others, which helped me feel better about myself. Hmm. So instead of uh, focusing of God, what's going to happen is the end of the world. Try figuring out what can you do for uh, another person. You can make a mask and uh, donate it. You can just call somebody up who is alone and talk with them for 15 minutes and that will help another person and you are going to feel much better about yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, on your own, it's uh, any virus or bacteria don't, uh, doesn't like uh, oxygen. So oxygenating your body is very important. If you can, uh, if you are in a warmer climate, uh, go out and walk every day. If you are like me in Michigan, where it's already winter, just every time you go outside, make a point of breathing, uh, deep breath, which means breathe in a way that your uh, stomach, push out your stomach. So uh, that will uh, bring in more air into your lungs. Breathe in slowly, push out your, your uh, belly, then push it in and uh, let out all, as much air of your lungs as possible. Do it at least 10 times, several times a day and you will feel much better, both uh, physically and mentally. Mm. It's interesting. The other thing is uh, try to eat uh, not comfort food, but healthy food. Mm. That's very important. And drink enough water because the uh, whole system, our whole system works much better if it's proper hydrated. And drinking water means you, you drink about quarter to half a cup of water at a time. Because if, uh, if you drink more, basically it goes through you very fast. And uh, it's really important to, to be aware if you don't feel well, uh, contact your doctor as, as fast as possible. Yeah. Because as sooner you, you uh, contact, you might not have COVID, you might have a flu, you might have something else, 
So if you have something else and you, uh, you have COVID, you should contact the doctor so you can get treatment as soon as possible because it's easier to treat. Right. If you don't have, don't worry about it. Stop <laughs> worrying, you know? <laughs> right. <laughs> So I think there, there are very simple things that people can do. Positive mindset is one, um, drinking water, taking deep, full belly breaths, and um, getting some outside natural, like air, sunshine, fresh air going out. Those are kind of some preventative And help things. others. And, and helping others. Got it. All right. So um, before we wrap up, um, so your website is your last name, S-T-O-I-C-A dot com. Um, Stoica. Um, and if, if folks want to set up a session, um, do they have to be in Michigan or can they set up a session, take a picture of their front body, their back Just body? Contact, uh, contact me through, through my website, send an email and I will let them know what they need for a session. Okay. So you do remote sessions. So someone can actually Absolutely. be anywhere All they want. The, yeah. They just have to submit a picture of their front, their back, don't even worry about that. Just contact me and I give them the whole list what they You'll need. You'll give them the whole list of things that they need. And and then like how many sessions for, you know, the people with ALS, you're saying that, okay, it's not like, you know, medicine will, you'll give them a pill and they'll be better sooner. This is, you're working on the, looking at the root cause of the problem. So it may be a while, right? Like how many sessions or does it kind of depend? I don't know. It depends because it depends how, how old the person is, how healthy is their, uh, are their life habits, and if they are willing to follow what I am recommending them. I yeah. had, for example, a person who uh, had uh, ALS and uh, she had the traditional ALS, which means... Uh, she fell several times on her head oh. off the horse. And uh, she had problems uh, talking and uh, eating. And uh, she loved com uh, competing with the horses, the high jumps. And uh, I would repair her uh, every Sunday, I would repair her uh, neural connections and she would be able to speak better and eat better. Uh, but on Saturday, next Saturday, she would go to competitions. And as much as I tried to convince her not to do it, because the more you, you break it, the more difficult it is to repair. Uh, she said to me that her life doesn't have any meaning unless she... Wow does the horses so it's a yeah. choice uh, talking about the ALS I found something very interesting that uh, ALS is a is an illness which is diagnosed by elimination and I found people to have completely different problems not broken neural uh, connections that can be fixed but mm. they need to to do uh, certain testing to figure out what it, it is really happening. Yeah. Wow. Well, um, I'm very excited about all the breakthroughs that you're just kind of discovering. Like you're kind of a medical scientist as well, as well as a healer. And um, we've been talking to Susanna Stokea about, um, Stokea about her book, Loving Heart, Discovering the Power of, Ener a power of Energy Healing Materials. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for having me.